smells, it affects your lungs, it affects kids. My grandkids have asthma. You really don't even want to be outside on, on humid days when it's smoky. You cough, your chest hurt, and I really don't want that for my child. In the neighborhood, you have playgrounds, and those areas are right in the shadows of industry. Southwest Detroit is a diverse community. Uh, Southwest Detroit is a vibrant community, but it's also very contaminated. Like a stout heart within the city is Detroit industry. I am Teresa Landrum. I'm from Southwest Detroit, 48217. This area here is predominantly African-American. 48217 Detroit is known as the state of Michigan's most polluted zip code. Has dozens of heavy polluting industries. One of the ones that, that people notice the most, of course, coming down I-75, looks like another city. It is Marathon. Uh, it's the only refinery in the state of Michigan. It produces hundreds of thousands of barrels of oil every week. Marathon Oil is surrounded by 55 other smokestacks. Steel production, automotive production. We have coal-fired power generation in this community, not to mention the northern border's busiest international crossing, bringing tens of thousands of trucks daily. I live within walking distance of every one of the industries. And sometimes I'll say, you know what, on a good day, I'll throw a rock and I can hit them. Areas that are proximate to large sources of air pollutants bear a disproportionate burden of disease. We have studies that show that across the United States, minority communities have more exposures to air pollution. Environmental racism is the fact that disproportionately all over the United States, Black, Latinx, Indigenous people suffered from toxic contamination, from air pollution, lack of access to healthy and fresh drinking water. I think the environmental justice movement is probably more closely rooted to the civil rights movement than the environmental movement. The environmental movement, you know, historically has been about conservation, has been about protecting and preserving wildlife. The environmental justice movement is more deeply rooted in human rights, so access to clean air, access to clean water, the right to, to live in an environment that's healthy. This is not unique to Detroit. When you start to look at race, when you start to look at income, and you start to layer who is dealing with the hundreds of years of industrial contamination, you can see pockets all over Michigan of black, indigenous, Latinx communities who are suffering with that burden. Flint has been a huge game changer, both in Michigan and nationally. In the Democratic presidential debates in 2019, Flint and environmental justice came up quite often. Just about every candidate issued a plan, an environmental justice plan. It's inspired the whole nation. There's hundreds of flints all across America. The president announced in the infrastructure plan, we're gonna remove all lead pipes in the country. And that I don't think happens without the Flint water crisis and also the activism of Flint residents. This area was a mecca for black people. Our families migrated here and this is the first area that African-Americans could come and buy homes. We had everything we needed here, not knowing that this area would have an adverse impact on our health. When the Great Migration really started and Ford's famous $5 a day wages brought people to Detroit, it was racism that directed people to certain neighborhoods. In the 1930s, they were redlined, which means that it was difficult to get loans and attract investments in, in the redlined areas. And so what you, you basically have wound up with all around the country are communities that were segregated, concentrated, and disinvested in. And that was all uh, public policy. In the 1960s, we had the civil rights laws, which were supposed to end all that. In many ways, the damage was already done. The segregated neighborhoods, you know, are already here those same neighborhoods got zoned for mixed and industrial uses. You see how massive it is. 
Marathon. This didn't used to be here when I was a kid. As I-75 was being built, Marathon was buying up property after property. I-75 is the center of our zip code 48217. It devastated the community because we had a loss of families. We had a loss of homes. And it brought along with it pollution. We still have that family camaraderie, but over the years, we've seen a lot of our residents die from various diseases. Both my parents passed away from complications of cancer, and I'm a cancer survivor. There's very good evidence that the types of air pollutants that are emitted and to which people are exposed in Southwest Detroit are linked to increased risk of asthma, asthma exacerbations. So that means more asthma events where people are having trouble breathing, um, may need to go to the emergency room. There's also very good evidence that the types of pollutants that are common in Southwest Detroit are linked to increased cancer risk and to increased cardiovascular and pulmonary adverse health outcomes and also excess mortality. I live in this neighborhood because this is all I know. If they would come and drop a whole bunch of money in my lap, I'm sure I would move. But why not buy out the whole area, three mile radius, something that can offset the pollution? We have information that this is harming people's health now. These external factors such as air pollution or, or climate um, greenhouse gases we can do something about that. And we have a responsibility to use the science to promote health for everyone. Just because you don't live in a toxic environment or in a community that is, you know, has air pollution or water contamination, doesn't mean it's not your problem. The United Nations has given us 10 years to figure out the problem of climate change and totally transform our economy. Environmental justice communities are just the canary in the coal mine. With changes that are anticipated with climate change and other issues, we can anticipate that we will see, be seeing more of those adverse health effects. And so attention to this issue is absolutely needed and timely. We need laws, we need the force of law. We need, we need to hold individuals accountable as well as public agencies. We need health in all policies. We need new tools like health impact assessments or cumulative environmental risk assessments. No longer will economically disadvantaged areas of our state be dumping grounds. So that we're not simply saying, well, this is a new pollutant that'll be emitted. It's okay because they're still underneath the limit without considering that there's already several other pollutants that are, are being released into the air and water of our communities. This is gonna be really life-saving legislation. The momentum is picked up. We're at a very good spot in terms of the number of people who are getting educated, the number of people who are interested in getting involved in environmental justice issues. I think we're also at a very critical time where there's a window. There's an opportunity that we have to seize. This is the time. There's been this awareness for a long time and a lot of, a lot of frustration that more progress hasn't been made. We all have to become allies to work to be good stewards uh, to protect Mother Earth because we don't have anything else. We still haven't got that colony on the moon. Elon Musk, them, they haven't got it, so you can't go anywhere, I can't go anywhere. If the world is so polluted, where can anybody go?